Do you want to make hamburgers that look like this? Or hamburgers that look like this? You know, the choice is yours. Let's get going. Today, I'm going to help you with three major problems when it comes to making hamburgers. Shrinkage, which is probably the number one problem, which is basically where the patty's shrinking to where it's disproportionately small compared to the diameter of the bun. It looks ridiculous. The second is swelling, where a big, nice, thick patty swells up to where it's like a softball, which also causes the diameter to shrink in size. Again, we don't want that to happen. And then cupping, which is where a thin burger is going to kind of cup and turn into like a bowl shape, which also causes the diameter to shrink. The first thing I'm going to address is your meat selection. This is 80-20 ground chuck. We want to keep the fat content high. I mean, 20 to 30%, in my opinion, makes for the perfect burger. But when it comes to shrinkage and swelling and everything, the grind is very important. If you can grind your own meat, that's the best. I mean, we're controlling everything. We're controlling quality of the meat and the size of the grind, whether it's going to be a really fine grind or a coarse grind. But we can buy meat that will produce beautiful burgers. So this is an example. This is actually the meat that's left over from this video that I'm going to shoot. But you can see how it's, you know, still, you can, it's strands, like little strands of meat. This will allow us to produce patties that will be able to breathe. The steam can escape, the, the juices have places to go, and you're not going to end up with that big swollen burger. If you're buying hamburger that comes in a chub, which is those plastic tubes, the meat has, they've done something for you in advance. They've basically ruined the meat by overly pro, uh, processing it. The worst thing we can do when we're making a patty is overwork the meat. You're gonna end up with a tough patty and you're gonna have problems like the shrinkage and the swelling up. I'm gonna show you how I personally form my patties. First, I wanna show you this. This is eight ounces of ground 80-20, and I'm going to reproduce this. I'm going to make another eight ounce patty, exactly the same diameter, exactly the same thickness, but there is a difference. This patty has been intentionally overworked. I did what I've seen so many people do at their homes when we've been over to have you know, dinner, is just kneading that, that raw ground beef like they're making a clay ball to throw at somebody or something or a snowball. You don't want to do that. When you're doing that, you're, you're making it for a tough burger, first of all, but also um, there's no avenues for the, ski, the steam to escape or the melted rendered fat to flow through. And so what's going to happen is your burger's going to swell up. Especially these, the big thick per burgers are the patties that are going to swell. I'm gonna show you how I make my patties. I love using these stainless steel rings and they have different sizes. I mean, you can see they fit in inside of one another. I have like three different sizes of these. And what I do is I gauge them by the bun size. Whether you're forming a patty with a ring like this or whether you're making them by hand, you always want to form the patty to where it's just a little larger in diameter than your bun. And you can see, for example, here's my bun. It'll fit easily inside of this with, with a little wiggle room. And that's what you want to look for here. I always make the burger patties to where they're gauged to the bun size. So I'll put my ring on the parchment. Then I have here eight ounces of pre-measured meat. I weigh the meat and then I'm just going to pack it in, but I'm not packing it firmly. I'm just using enough pressure to where it'll hold together. We just, we don't want to overwork this meat. It's just kind of very easily. I'm going into the edges here in the center and we're done. A lot of times what I'll do now, because there's all these concaves, you can address that when it hits the flat top, just give it a press, which is something that I'll do. Or you can take another parchment. And these burger parchments, you can get them on Amazon along with these. And I'll have, I have a link down below for these rings. These, I've gone through so many rings in my life. These things will last a lifetime. Originally I was using these, um, like I guess they were probably tin or aluminum or something. These things are thick stainless steel. But I'll take another parchment and put it on top. I'll take my spatula and just kind of smooth it out. 
makes it a little bit more uniform. And which is actually important because you want as much surface area to make contact with that flat top, flat top as possible. What we're going to do now is show you how to prevent the infamous swelling burger. So we're running the flat top at a medium high today. And here are those patties. Again, these are both eight ounces made with the exact same ring. You can, this is the one that I just made right here. And you can see the little crevices and everything. This is going to allow the steam and the fat pl you know, place to go. And here's that one that I overpacked. And you can see it's very, very smooth, very, very tight. Let's get these down. And we're not doing a recipe today, so I will not be seasoning these patties. So I want to show you something here. So this is the patty that I just made on camera. And you can actually see like a little hole that's kind of opened up and it's blowing steam out. It's up there in the upper right portion of that burger patty. I want to point out something else. I did not add any fat to this. I didn't add any oil to the flat top. You don't need to. In fact, with, with a burger on a flat top, you want it to kind of stick so you get that nice crest develop, especially with a, with a smash burger as we're going to demonstrate. Okay, we're getting some nice color coming up the sides here. We're going to flip. Now, we want, again, these burgers to stick so they're gonna create a nice crust. So you're going to want a really good, sturdy spatula. You want something that you can scrape. This has a beveled edge. Another great option is something like this. It's you know, made from a, a bricklayer's trowel. I'm gonna get down at an angle and scrape. And you can see it's bonded onto the grill. Give it a flip, you get a nice crust. Nice. Now this, if we're gonna have any problems, it's on the flip because now the crust is sealed in this side of the patty. So there's really no place for the greases to go or the steam and everything. So if this thing's gonna swell, this is when it's gonna happen. And you can actually see it's already a little bit smaller in diameter than this burger here. So I want you to see something that's going on here. You see how this is actually ruptured open. So the steam's wanting some place to go and it actually was able to rupture a hole here, forcing it out this way. So we may not get as much swelling like that, you know, baseball swelling that you would normally see, but you, you end up with a tear on the side of your burger and you can see it's swelling on this side. I mean, it's actually kind of inflating. And here's a really good angle to kind of demonstrate what's going on here. You can, you can see that the width is a lot different from this burger to this burger, and you can see how it's inflating. And I'm going to call this demo. Done. The next thing I'm going to address is everybody's favorite, the Smash Burger. Honestly, the Smash Burger is a fairly foolproof burger, and if you're going to uh, make hamburgers from meat from one of those plastic chubs, the smash burger is the one you're going to want to uh, use because uh, that overly packed beef isn't going to affect it as much. Um, but still, if you're making it from loosely ground beef, like I showed you, or your own grind, you still don't want to pack those meatballs too hard. But there is one mistake you can make that will cause the smash burger to shrink. And let me explain one thing before I start cooking here. When that meatball hits the flat top and smashes, you want this meat to stick because the meat's going to fight, fight. It wants to shrink. If you've, you know, watched a really thin piece of beef hit a hot skillet, it almost instantly uh, contracts. It shrinks. Hamburger's the same way. This cold beef is going to hit that hot skillet or flat top and it's going to want to contract very quickly. But with a smash burger, you're holding it down. I, I like to hold it down a good 10 seconds or so and get that beef bound onto the flat top. You do not need to add any extra oil. Like smash burgers, the restaurant smash burgers, they add a little clarified butter. Butter doesn't uh, lubricate as well as like say, you know, a good cooking oil. And, and it added, really I think they're doing that more for the flavor. This 80-20 is going to produce more than enough grease to cook these burgers. You don't need to add any more. What, what adding oil does, that lubrication 
is going to allow that meat to contract a lot more than it would if you had not used the oil. So let's watch. So first the meat I want to show you, we're using two three ounce balls of ground 80-20 chuck. One of these burgers, I'm going to add some oil. The other I'm not. So you can see how this one's spiderwebbed. It's spiderwebbed because the meat's holding on, the steam's finding places to go. It's making its own little openings here, these little bubbles, these little crevices. So these are ready to flip, and you can see how it's really bound on here. There's that. This is that crust you want from a smash burger. This one <laughs> still has a nice crust, but look at the size difference of these patties. Now these are both three ounce patties and a common weight for smash burgers two ounces. So you can imagine if this one was two ounces how small it would be. I think I've demonstrated my point here. So the next thing we're going to work on is cupping, solving the problem of cupping. I call it that. I don't know if anybody else does. But anyway, it's where those small patties are again turning into bowls. Uh, these, I have three patties that I made. They're all 3.8 ounces. The one difference is this one I've overworked. The other two I have not. And I'm going to also show you a, a technique that a lot of the burger joints use to prevent cupping. Uh, this is going to be very common on store-bought, like pre-made frozen patties, which is why the third patty I, I overworked. I'm just going to leave this one alone on the griddle. Uh, let's do this. I gotta do this quickly. So here's the overworked patty right here. This one's not, and this one is not. So one of the techniques that a lot of burger joints use is they'll basically take their spatula and just kind of put a little, not really cuts, but indentations in them. Some of them do it like three times, some of them do it two. And that's going to kind of help prevent the cupping. And hopefully we'll get it to happen here. It's very common on burgers that had been frozen. This, this beef here has never been frozen, so fingers crossed. Now one thing I can see from my vantage point, hopefully you guys can see, is this burger is shrinking. Let me see, I'll go to the edge here. These other two are not shrinking. This one is. Again, all of these are three point ounces each, weighed out on a digital scale, and all use the same, uh, that, that forming ring that you saw earlier. But you can see it's pretty dramatically shrinking now. What I'm going to do now is just wait for the surface of these patties to get a little bit of a sheen on them, then we'll flip them. All right. This patty's cupping ever so slightly. I, we're not going to get the dramatic cupping that I was looking for. I really should have froze this overnight, but it is what it is. So this experiment didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to with, again, I was hoping to see that bowl effect, but I think I still made my point. I mean, there's definitely a difference with the diameters of these three burgers. This one here that I did not do the indentation on, you know, the whatever scoring I guess you'd call it and it's again overly processed definitely shrank a lot more than the other two 
So that last experiment, I think I made my point in that the burger patty did shrink a lot more than the other two. I was hoping for the drama of that cupping. The big mistake I made was I was using too good of beef. It's never been frozen. It, and I should have bought frozen patties. I, I could have proved my point with three frozen patties there. That scoring of the patties actually works. It, it works. So if you're cooking frozen patties for a, like a baseball team or whatever, make sure you're doing that. It only takes a couple seconds and it will save your burgers from getting really small and turning into bowls. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope I helped some of you folks out. Um, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell. Thumb it up if you liked it. I hope you did. And keep those suggestions coming in. See you on the next video. Cheers.